Hi, everyone. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Gil Schwed, who is founder and CEO of Checkpoint Software. Gil, I know you're widely seen to be somebody who was the in inventor of the modern firewall. You've, you've authored several patents. So you know the cybersecurity environment like few others. I'm looking at that scary map in the background there. Welcome and, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Diane. Pleasure being here. So let's, I want to talk about how the threat environment has shifted, especially there's a lot of discussion around generative AI. Does that change anything fundamental for you? I think first the threat landscape in recent years have greatly evolved, became far more sophisticated. Put it in simple terms, we're seeing much more attacks and we are much more sophisticated. I think it went up in the US by like 58% last year. Worldwide, mm -hmm. just 38%, just. I mean, it's a huge numbers that are growing, and mainly what's growing is the sophistication. It's not the number of the attacks. Uh, now, generative AI can be a big, can take a big role in making it a little bit worse. Uh, it's becoming much simpler to develop an attack. Uh, mm -hmm. The tools that we know that are amazing tools, by the way. I'm not, I'm not here to uh, to threaten people of AI. I think it's one of the potential things to generate real revolutions in our world technological revolutions, uh, but yeah, they also make uh, writing, for example, malware very, very easy. You can go mm -hmm. to a tool like ChatGPT, ask it to develop a background that collects, uh, like back office application that collects information and then to write a phishing email and the phishing of email will look perfect to link them together. And you can do all of that without knowing how to program and without even having the best English to write the phishing email, and you'll get results that's uh, actually higher level than most attacks that we are seeing today. So obviously it creates threats and it also creates opportunities. And when you talk about the number of attacks going up, that's not necessarily the number of successful attacks, is it? I mean, we've become much more sophisticated at detecting, preventing, at least preventing the damage from attacks. I mean, do you feel uh, that in essence, um, you know, where do you see opportunity in using chat GPT and, and similar, you know, chat bots to actually fight cyber crime? I think they can also be used to fight cyber attacks because first we are using a lot of AI in our tools just to give you, just to understand what's the sophistication of uh, cyber today. We have what we call threat cloud. It's like a a central brain that uh, analyzes everything that's going on around and tries to determine if any type, file, connection, anything is malicious or not. Uh, we use in that 75 different threat engines, as we call it, to mm -hmm. identify and stop these attacks. By now, 42 of them are already AI-based. So AI is something that's been in the works for a long time. We just launched five new ones, and last year there's been 12 new AI-based engines. So AI can definitely help us fight. Uh, how to fight these specific attacks that uh, ChatGPT will create, that's still a good question. It all the, the tool only exists for two months, and I think we've already found that it has been used in at least five different cases to create cyber attacks. Successfully so, are you able to, have, I mean, with the existing protections we have, um, I'm assuming we're able to detect still those threats, are we not? Or is it becoming increasingly difficult? Uh, it depends. Phishing attacks are sometimes hard to detect, but again, it depends by whom. I mean, we are saying we are blocking, when I'm giving the attack statistics, it's attacks that we are blocking on our customer sites. I, I don't want to think what's happening on people that are not our customers or that they are not using uh, enough security products. And by the way, unfortunately, we do see people being hacked every day. It's not, you know, we invest so much in um, fighting many other threats in our world and these threats don't happen or they happen once every few years. In cyber, it's the one threat that happens every single day. I mean, it's not, not every single day. It happens, you know, uh, a typical organization is being attacked uh, today in the U.S. almost 1,200 times a week. That's not the... Uh, that, that map that I'm looking at behind you, that is, is that attacks that are going on? Basically, I'm seeing all these streaks, almost like Haley's Comet. So that's you tracking sort of global cyber attacks within your system? 
Yeah, that's the attacks that we are seeing right now around the world, sorted so you can make sense of the uh, of the arrows. But these are real attacks. It shows you here the type of attack. It shows where it's coming, where it's going. By the way, where it's coming, you have to understand it doesn't mean the fact that I don't know what we see here that uh, uh, let's say the U.S. is attacking uh, somewhere in Europe doesn't mean that the hacker is the U.S. It means that the hacker is using a computer in the U.S. Right. to attack some target in Europe. Does this change the calculus around cloud at all, Gil? Because I know that, um, you know, maybe that conversation is done at this point, but as companies have moved so much into the cloud, um, does should we be thinking any differently about it in light of some of the new technologies coming out? Well, I, I, first, I think that good technology is generally good. The cloud is definitely a big revolution. It has a lot of benefits. Uh, it also has some weaknesses. Security is one of the weaknesses of the cloud. I mean, when mm -hmm. you're putting something on the cloud, you're much more exposed when, when you're inside your data center or inside your corporate headquarters. Also, cloud application really enjoy the fact that there is tremendous kind of uh, amount of uh, other technologies that they can use. So the typical cloud application is connected to 15 other applications. Mm -hmm. from, from a security standpoint, it's a nightmare because that means that each one of these 15 other applications can inflect your uh, application or can steal or can cause something bad to your application on the cloud. So I think cloud is definitely a big challenge. It's huge investment on our side to defend the cloud. And it's one of the most uh, broad areas and sophisticated things that we have to protect against. So, you know, Gil, we were speaking earlier this week with um, Sam Altman of OpenAI and he basically gave us the, the, I'm looking at his exact quote here, that artificial general intelligence could break democracy, which sounds quite extreme. How, how are you thinking about it from where you sit? How profound a shift is this in terms of simply changing the game? Again, every technology that comes back, there's people that will get overexcited and there's people that are really, really afraid of new technology, every technology. And I think every technology, if it's used right, it has usually very, very good potential. We just talked about it in dinner last night and we said it actually can democratize a lot of things. People that are not amazing in writing skills can now write their, you know, write their essays, write their requests in a professional manner. And they uh, and they will be now equal to somebody that got amazing education and they know how to write, uh, you know, uh, perfect letters in English and present their case. Now, if you have a case, you can present it in, in a good way. So in that regard, it's actually democratize our society. Mm -hmm. uh, all, I mean, it can help, you know, think about education. On one hand, you can say it's bad. Kids don't have to learn anymore. They can just use a chat GPT to write their essays at schools. So that's one risk. On the other flip side, they can use uh, this tool to learn. I mean, I've, I've done it for my uh, son at school. I said, write me 10 questions about this book. Now mm. go answer these 10 questions. Now you can ask them also write the answers so you can really be really prepared for the test. And that's a very good way to prepare yourself to a test on the book. So, I mean, there's so many good things you can do with technology. I think what we should do is focus on how we leverage that and know how to be afraid of a change. Now, I'm catching you. You're having a meeting, I believe, in New York right now. Um, what is on your radar that you would put on ours in terms of what, what you're thinking about with regard to the opportunities and um, challenges in the current market? So first, I think that we all need more cybersecurity. But again, it's not just spend more money. And I think that New York likes to think in these terms. Just uh, I, I think it's more of how do we do things right and what's what can we improve and how to outsmart our in, our investment and uh, and the resources that we have. And I think first. 2023 can be the year of AI, so that's one big focus. Another focus that I have, which is the most important, how do we first deploy what we call prevention first architecture? Don't just detect that there's something wrong going on, but prevent it from happening. Mm -hmm. And second, then what we call now the free seas, solutions that are uh, comprehensive, consolidated and collaborative. And I'll just say one sentence about the collaborative. The challenge is very simple. When you have today a fire alarm on the sixth floor, 
Everybody reacts, the door being shut, the elevator stops. Everybody takes a notice to contain this fire alert, which may, may or may not be, by the way, severe. It may be a false alarm, like we see many times, but we're all fighting to make sure nothing happens. In cyber, it's the opposite. We have 15 different tools to combat cyber attack. One of them notices an attack. If we're lucky, one, this tool stops the attack, stop that instance of the attack. But guess what? The malware might have spread from the room at the sixth floor to the entire floor. It may come again from, again, it doesn't come from the, from the main door. It may come from the secondary door or from the window. So, and we're not doing anything about that. So we are trying to build now security tools that will be collaborative, that will work together. So it's, it's both interoperability, but also the willingness to share that sort of data. So some, it's not necessarily a technological challenge as it is also a perhaps a leadership challenge, is it? That willingness it's to both, share data? It, it's both, hmm. but it's also the, the fact that you really need to act together. It's not just knowing about it. Remember, right. unlike the physical, the physical example that I gave is a little bit simpler to understand, but in cyber, I don't mean that we will all get an alert every hour because mm -hmm. as I said, we're being attacked uh, 10 times an hour. So it's not that we get 10 alerts, but the tools behind us, these automatic bots that are supposed to stop the bad guys, they should collaborate and they should run all the time. And again, and they can run behind the scenes without us noticing. And we need to make that happen. It's not a simple task to achieve. It's not a simple task to get all the customers to enable it, but I think it's necessary and it will really, really improve our ability to, to stop all attacks. So let me ask another question, Gil, which is, let me put myself in the situation of being a leader if I have a company or, you know, big or small. Um, in, in light of what I'm reading about every day with regard to generative AI and, and the new cyber threat environments, what would be the, the ways in which I should consider acting differently in light of some of the new technologies? What, what should I perhaps trust less? What, are you acting any differently in terms of how you deal with your own threat environment? Threat environment, we keep upgrading and updating. We are a very good company. I think we have been touch wood. They will never say that, but we have very good protection because it's based on us. And it's, we are but, pretty but should much we trust, should checkpoint. we be less trusting? Perhaps we should be less trusting of what we read or see in light of um, what's, what people are capable of producing now. Uh, that's always true. In the last uh, two decades, I think we've seen so much fake news, false information. And again, it's not because people became worse or bad. It's because we have so much information. So mm. I mean, that's the that's the thing that we should worry about. And we are exposed to so much information. And that is good. That is not bad, actually. Anything else you would want to say just about where you see some of the opportunities? And let's look at it on a on a global basis. I know we tend to focus a lot here in the US, but um, there is a, certainly more awareness, not just of cybersecurity. I know companies are trying to look for climate risk and some of the other areas of risk in the world. Um, does that create a good growth trajectory for you or are you seeing certain pockets that really are emerging as new areas for Checkpoint? I think we would like to grow with the positive things in the world, not with the negative things. That should be our driver. And I'm very lucky that we've been part of that because I think the Internet Revolution, I'm celebrating now 30 years to starting Checkpoint. Um, and that's very, very Happy long amount of time. Most technology companies don't survive that long. Uh, and we are not just surviving, we are thriving. It's our market is at the hottest time. It's not a, it's not an old market. It's a young and a, it's a young market. I think the reason is that we are part of a big revolution in the world. And uh, again, every few years in the internet, we sh we sh we've seen the next thing in the internet and why it's important. The last three, three years are not an exception. I think we won't survive that pandemic and being in lockdowns when everything moved to the internet. You know, collaboration, work, entertainment, and, uh, and trade were all moved almost 100% to the net when we gave up a lot of the physical world. Now that we're going out to the physical world, and I'm glad that we are, we are still dependent a lot in cyber. So I think in the, that the internet is a, is a very, very important phenomenon in making our world better, more connected, more open. I hope that more democratic world and uh, I mean the, making it secure is an important task and that remains our task. One other question if you don't mind Gil because you are 
one of the titans of, of industry. I, I think I've been intrigued by the fact that you know, we are seeing innovation coming out of a relatively small player in terms of the discussion right now around chat, GPT. Um, it brings to mind that innovator's dilemma. Uh, did you see that? Since we have such large players, we expect to see a lot of this innovation coming from the people with the most resources, the ones that have said they will be AI first. What's your perspective on that as somebody that is, in essence, in many ways, the behemoth that others go after? First, it's a challenge, and I'm now, you know, I started, we were free people. The first two years in Checkpoint, we built an amazing product. We built, we started an industry, and we were free people. We uh, we raised about uh, $200,000, so it just shows you that you can make an impact. And we never needed more money, by the way. We never raised more, so you actually, you can build big things with very limited resources. On the same time, we're now a bigger company, and we need to use, and so first we do far more innovation today than we did before, but it's very clear to me that there is plenty of innovation outside, and uh, and we always need to watch for the next thing. We always need to watch for the big idea, and I think we are doing that. And so does the other uh, giant uh, technology companies, and it's an interesting thing to see that. I mean. Many of the new innovation come and will come for small groups of people that have a lot to gain, nothing to lose, and mainly they are going to a new greenfield that they can explore. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess uh, long live the innovators. So thank you for joining us and look forward to continuing the conversation. Wonderful. Thank you very much. It's been great being here. Thank you. Thanks, Gil.